Female genital mutilation, also known as circumcision or cutting, continues to be widely practiced on young girls. The numbers increase during summer when many girls are taken abroad during the summer school holidays to be cut. We all know there's plenty of discussion about FGM, but what does this actually mean for those of us living in communities where this continues to be practiced? Florence Aqua, you're a healthcare worker. You're trying to help those young women who've had FGM. What kind of impact does FGM have on their lives? Well, women who have undergone FGM can have a number of problems, whether it's infertility, difficulty passing urine, urinary infection, and sometimes they have problems during childbirth. It's important for us to understand what these women are going through and then give them the appropriate referrals. Whether it's the GP, the general practitioner, whether it's a doctor, whether it's a nurse, whether it's a midwife, they should be able to access help. Some people claim that for cultural reasons, there are benefits to having a FGM. Are there any health benefits afforded to a woman who undergoes FGM? No, that's all I'll say. None, no, none period. whatsoever. So if there are no health benefits, why does the practice continue? Why? Some people linked it with um, purification, cleansing. It has nothing to do with that. It's a manipulation. Ibrahim, what can men do to help end this practice? Men can easily end this practice if we stop the cultural bit of it. Because if we keep on asking our parents, I want to marry it, I need a woman that is clean. And when you say to your, your father or your grandparent that you need a woman that is clean, automatically it clicks that any woman that you want to marry should be circumcised. Yeah. What about the spiritual side? Pastor McCauley, let me ask you directly. Mm. Does your faith support FGM? No. There is nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere that it says it should be done to females. I can't find it. From Genesis to Revelation, no. Let's look at the Quran then. Shaheen, does the Quran, does Quranic scripture support the practice of FGM? FGM is not sanctioned in the Quran whatsoever. Um, it is also, it's not sanctioned in the Sunnah. Um, so it is not sanctioned by our religion. Let me go to you, Muna Hassan. You're working with young people in Bristol and beyond. What do you see? Um, often young people mention that um, FGM is a really sensitive issue. It's an issue that um, has always been discouraged um, to discuss and to talk about. Um, it's something that's very taboo in all our communities and there's just boundaries there that you never cross. It can be quite difficult though for a young person, say a teenager, to challenge some of the myths mm -hmm. or the cultural practices that have been handed down. What's really important for young people is to have the right kind of information from the right people and to go home and say, well, actually, mom or dad, this isn't in the Bible, this isn't in the Quran, this isn't in the Torah, this isn't in any religion. Um, it's, okay, it's okay to go home and say, well, this has detrimental health impacts mm -hmm. on a woman's body, on a woman's mental health, um, and I don't want to experience that. At the end of the day, FGM is illegal, so child protection, child safeguarding is paramount. What we need to do is to trust the social services. This woman that have gone through this practice is not their fault. Yeah. So we have to help them. And the only way we can help them is to join on and fight to put this thing to an end. So Florence, if I were a survivor or somebody who felt at risk of FGM and I went to the NHS, what would happen? First and foremost, it's about a caring and a compassionate service that, that we can provide. So it's about making sure that we will listen to what you're saying and actually make the appropriate referral. So depending on what you have, if we have to refer you to counselling services, to urology, etc., we can make those referrals in a timely fashion. Well, I think this is clear. FGM is harmful, but there is hope. Not only can women who've survived FGM get help and support, but change is possible if we all pull together to stop FGM happening in our communities. If you or your family have been affected by FGM, the NHS is here to support you. Visit nhs.uk slash FGM or speak to your GP, nurse or midwife.